Dear friends in Jesus, our sermon text this morning is from St. Paul's second epistle to Timothy, chapter one. We read, beginning with the third verse. I thank God, whom I serve with a clean conscience as my ancestors did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. When I remember your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I remember your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am convinced that it also lives in you. For this reason, I am reminding you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a timid spirit, but a spirit of power and love and sound judgment. The word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, family, and you confirmants, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. This is the time when you hear it. Drivers, start your engines. But today we're gonna say it a little differently. Daughters, start your engines. There's going to be a point, but for now, I'd like to ask you daughters and all you sons, all of you who have a mother or, or at least in memory are thinking of your mother today or your grandmother, the faithful, the blessings God has given us in the generations gone before. How often do you say this? Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. I'm sure not often enough. It's good to have a day devoted to saying, thanks, Mom. I love you, Mom. Wow. Mom. It's a good thing. Good thing to have a mom and a grandmother. How about this? Thank you, God, for Mom. That's a prayer that we could all probably pray a lot more often. Something to, to thank God for. Mom is often the first word babies say and the last word the crying die we we children pretend that moms really don't know anything until we need mom to be everything and it's a good thing to to look back and say mom you did something I never asked for you gave me life as it turns out it's a very nice thing indeed but what if Mom can do even more than that. What if mom not only gives us life, but also gives us just what we need? The intelligence, the information, the thing to trust that gives us new life, that gives us life for the eternal soul. Well, that's a, that surely is a wonderful mother indeed. And that's what St. Paul pointed to when he spoke to St. Timothy in this emotional, involved, thoughtful letter from one older itinerant traveling pastor to a younger pastor who was put into place to shepherd the flock of God. As it turns out, the times had changed since mom and grandma had helped Timothy through the faith. And through the course of what we discussed today in in our sermon, We'll, we'll understand that a little bit better. And, and throughout all of it, we'll keep in mind that this was the important part. A dangerous time for Christians, uh, a hard time to stick to the faith. It lived on. The same faith that Lois and Eunice, mom and grandma never invented. They didn't invent the wheel, but it came down to them as the same faith that will continue until Jesus Christ returns to take us to our final home. The faith lives on. And I think that's really important for all of us to see from time to time and how much more on the day of confirmation for Lucy, Evelyn, and Olivia today. The faith lives on. Today we're moved by memories and today we fan our faith into flame for the future. 
Paul was moved to write 2 Timothy as the last of the letters we have from Paul. Of the 13 letters that Paul wrote, we call them Pauline epistles, in the New Testament, Paul wrote a lot. This was, chronologically speaking, the last one. 2 Timothy. And he had a chance to look back and remember things. The first thing he remembers is his fellow servant in the word, Timothy, in his prayers of thanksgiving to God. I think he had a lot to thank God for because, um, because it was important to know that Paul understood Timothy's family situation that when Paul started traveling with the word of God in the book of Acts, he came, he was led to this place, he came upon this place called Lystra, and there in Lystra he met this family where the mother was a Jew and the father was a Gentile, we're not sure if the father was even around, and she had a son named Timothy. Her name was Eunice and her mother was Lois. And they had the faith of the Old Testament. They were looking ahead to the Messiah to come. Little did Timothy know until the gospel came with Paul and he he shared that gospel message in Lystra that the Messiah had come and that he fulfilled all those promises, not the least of which was dying on the cross for his sins and rising again to seal the fate of those who trust in him, that those who believe in Jesus have the very same faith that lives on. Paul also talks about another thing that he remembered. He remembered the last time he spoke with St. Timothy, Timothy was in tears. Being in the ministry isn't always easy and sometimes there's a lonely feeling. There's also a lot of very rewarding feelings about sharing the gospel for a living and and trusting um, that what is spoken will be heard because God's word doesn't return empty. So when two ministers working together, one, the father figure, um, has to go. Then, of course, there were tears. It was difficult. It was hard. And at the same time, it was a treasured thing. But not, not because Paul was left in tears himself or that, that Timothy only had tears, but ultimately, Paul says, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. It was the joy that they had when together when separated was the hard part. And all the more, when you consider what was going on in the world, Christianity now was a religio illicita. It was now, under the Roman rule, an illegal religion, very illegal. In fact, they were inventing new cruel ways to punish the Christians. And it had a lot to do with that Nero Caesar, who, um, looking back, not a great not a great figure, not the greatest leader for a whole empire, certainly not for the Christians. But the heat was on. Peter, by this time, by the time Paul wrote 2 Timothy, Peter was probably crucified. And from all we get, by all accounts, crucified upside down in order not to be like Jesus Christ. They were throwing Christians into the gladiator rings, in the Colosseum. They were lighting them up as lampposts at night. There was a lot of horrible things going on, and of course, Timothy needed encouragement. He held to this faith that he knew from infancy on, and yet Paul had reminders for him. Well, I have reminders for you today. Young ladies, we're not being persecuted for the faith bodily, at least not yet. And while the world is heating up around faith and perhaps in new ways at least in our society we Christians are being insulted and and called unpopular and it may be a sin to the secular world to actually spread your faith to witness the truth that you know in Jesus Christ it could be worse we're very grateful to God for those things that we can look back on our memories and say oh I have a mother who cared enough to put me in Sunday school and made sure I was there week in and week out and faithfully enrolled and learning those Bible truths. And if the whole world melts around us and the mountains fall into the sea, nothing can take that away and the word of God that's in your heart will last forever. 
You have parents who loved you and who wanted you to understand the faith more and more, so you were brought to confirmation class. And looking back on your past, maybe there were those times when you were learning memory work that you were brought to tears too. It's not easy studying God's word. It can be really exhausting. If you had frustrating moments with the memory work that I threw at you over and over again, and as we worked our way up the chart, um, if you had emotional moments, you're not alone. I was there, and anyone who's ever intensively studied God's word feels the same. You're not alone in this Christian faith. It didn't just appear in front of us. For generations and generations, people have been working with God's word, trusting that what information we get is for our good, because God loves us, and he wants us to be safe and saved with him. And so on that basis, Paul also reminds Timothy to remember something he told him before, this sort of unique phrasing, fan into flame the gift that God's given you. The picture is like a bellows. Um, if you know anything about blacksmiths, about um, like two things that hold together, push together, something sort of like a, an accordion, but it doesn't make noise, it makes wind and it blows into a fire to feed it oxygen so that it can grow. You get a sense of this maybe when you're putting logs on your campfire, when you're hanging around with a group of friends at night or your family, or um, really just revving that engine as you get ready for the Indy 500. Paul wanted Timothy to pay close attention to maintenance for his faith. So how do we do this? You know already how to fan into flame the gift God has given you. Well, you have your baptism. You can look back at those promises. They still last. When you sin, you know you can drown your sinful nature in the waters of that baptism, and those promises will rejuvenate you and restore you and refresh, refresh you so that your new creation may rise again and fight the battle one more time against the devil and all of his temptations. You also know that you need to hear the word of God. Faith comes from hearing the message the message is heard through the word of Christ. I could have had you say that, I know. But, um, but I wanted to, okay? You also have an opportunity to fan into flame that gift to really rev your engines and get going on the rest of life now by attending Holy Communion. All the things that you just told us, they're true for you and more. All the things we discussed in class all the confident promises, and some of the best ones are so simple. It's for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ means to surround us with that forgiveness by affecting each of our five senses. Remember we talked about that? You can smell the wine as it comes by. You can taste it. You can touch true forgiveness with Jesus Christ, true body and blood, in, with, and under the bread and wine. Not because we understand it, but because we walk by faith, not by sight. Jesus himself has said it. And so, fan into flame that gift. It's not a gift, it's not a timid spirit. I find it kind of funny that Paul says, um, I haven't given you a spirit of timidity to Timothy. It's sort of a tongue twister. What is biblical timidity? I'm a little concerned that in our modern sensibilities we hear, hear the idea of timidity and we think, Oh, well, that just means go for it. That means seize the day. That means go win friends, influence people, be a type A personality, and talk a lot. It's not exactly what the Bible means. When the Bible talks about a timid spirit, it's talking about spiritual cowardice. That when the devil comes along and tempts you, that you're just kind of a pushover. Okay, I guess I'll sin because all my friends are doing it. Okay, I guess I won't go to church because I've got all kinds of other things going on. Okay, I guess I won't crucify my sinful flesh and really understand that sin brings guilt and the only solution is Jesus and his forgiveness. No, don't be a spiritual pushover. Don't approach it with like, like a spiritual coward. But instead, Paul says, you have a spirit of power, the same spirit of power that came on Samson and and that moved a whole nation out from under the thumb of the Philistines. Uh, the spirit of love, this is agape love, the love that looks out for one another and seeks the best of the person you love. And sound judgment, which has a lot to do with self-control. 
being able to know, all right, even though I feel this way, I also know that sometimes feelings are wrong and they change and there's a better way to think. Maybe I need more facts. Maybe I need to go back to God's word. Maybe I need to trust in his promises and I need help in the sacrament. That's, that's the kind of thing that God wants for you and we know that because Timothy wanted it because Paul wanted it for Timothy and let's be honest, it's what your mom's want for you for the rest of your life. Your mothers, your fathers, all your family members, daughters, start your engines because we're about to show everybody the faith lives on. In the name of Jesus, amen.